Uh, Keith Wood, good morning to you. Good morning, Sunshine. How are you? I'm very good. It's, um, I mean, it's a difficult enough game from um, some perspectives to preview, but it's not that difficult from others. Ireland just need to be clinical, be ruthless, put in a good performance and move on. Just get the five points, get out of there and hope that there's no injuries. It's a, it's a very straightforward ask this week. It is very, um, that's a very succinctly put. Um, uh, if if I go back to games that I would have played a long time ago in hard conditions, the idea when you're playing against a team that isn't as good as you is to remind them of that fact as early as you possibly can and just absolutely turn the screw on the pressure. So it may not be the most attractive style of, of rugby. It doesn't have to be. It needs to be effective. You need to get into a good position. You need to put the opposition away Um and uh, kind of remind them of the fact that they're not the full-time professionals that are, are permanently playing at a high level all the time. You make it really hard for them. So you become very physical, very clinical, kick plenty, don't let yourself get set up for, for, for big shots, um, and just let your experience rule. But you still have to play with a high level of physicality. This sounds like exactly what Ireland should have done when we had scored two tries at the weekend as well. That there's a there's a, a textbook game plan there that we should have employed at that point. Well, I actually thought we played. I won't say we played well for the first twenty minutes, but we were pretty effective for the first twenty minutes, and we got ourselves into a good position to do it. And I thought we lost our way a little, a little bit down to inexperience of some of the players, a little bit down. I I don't know. I I. I looked at all the coverage, but I also looked at um, I looked at it with a kind of bleak eye myself, um, and I felt we um, I just felt we left our composure leave us a little, and you have to get mentally into a place of where you do the job and finish the job. That's where we have to be, and we weren't at the weekend. We got caught in the emotion. We suddenly started playing into their um, ability. When you when you listen to what Jamie Joseph was saying afterwards, that actually um, we knew that Ireland were going to try and take one-up carriers and they had two and three people on it. That was the point where you continue to kick it. You know, it's quite... It's quite interesting to think that if you kick more, you put yourself into a position. But every big hit that they had, every uh, element of a penalty that they got just was giving them additional emotional energy. It was actually taking it away from us. So I thought we got stuck um, and we didn't show the leadership on the field to go and deliver that. You need to pull all these things in pretty quickly. Yeah, I, that that's a really interesting situation for Ireland to find themselves in because it, it kind of crystallises a lot of the criticism of... Joe Schmidt, even when things were going well, the, it was like, oh, you know, we're not, we're not playing a very creative brand of rugby. Yeah, but we're winning. Everybody calm down. Like, uh, you know, we would win tight games when it looked like we were a much better team than that. What we would always kind of play within ourselves to make sure that we had, you know, we were controlling the controllables. And then when you can no longer do that, when something goes against you, the team is programmed to be in control, but actually doesn't know what to do when they aren't in control. I, I think that's a I think that's a fair criticism, and I think it's one of the issues that we have. So if we if we kind of get some of the stuff out of the way first, um, what Joe has given us for the last few years is a sense of control of our own destiny. You know, which we've never had before. You know, to be able to go into big games and win big games, he has put us into a really good position. Um, uh, it's so clinical at times. I think at times we miss the fact that you need to get to the emotional pitch of the game. And I don't know that we did against Japan. Even though we were ahead after 20 minutes, I don't think we'd got fully to the emotional pitch of the game. And in fact, uh, Japan brought it up an extra level. And so I would say that in the last year, in this year, this calendar year, we have struggled a little bit in some, in some matches. So we play well in one match, then we play badly in the next. And it's very frustrating. We say, yes, but it's part of a bigger program and bigger plan. It is, but we're in the bigger plan now. So we can't afford to have those dips. And without a shadow of a doubt, we'd a dip. And I know there was a conversation over referees. And of course, you lose you lose calls. That happens in every game. You know, that's part and parcel of the game. Um, but for me, um, I felt we hadn't quite got to the point of where um, we were able to deliver on the emotional level of that game. And because of that, we then lost the level of, of contact that we'd want, the level of accuracy that we want in different areas. And the conditions are difficult, but it's the mentality that you you need at different times um, that they co- they cover that up. 
they, they, it means you don't make those mistakes or you don't make as many. So this is the last cautionary tale that we can have. This is the last one where we say, okay, we've learned our lessons from that. We can't, we've no more slip ups allowed now. Um, I think we're still in a very good position. I still have a higher level, a high level of expectation for the team. Um, but we just need to be absolutely brutal for the next two weeks and get to where we all thought we'd be, which is in a quarter final against one of the two big teams in the World Cup. And then we see where we are because we have that capacity to raise our game, to get that emotional intensity for the really big game. And if we don't get it on that game, so be it. That's it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get our, our balance right. But these games are tricky for us because we just want to get past them. Yeah, and not, not a great situation to be in. You've, you've actually got to go out and put in as good a performance as you possibly can because you don't know what falling off that performance 10-15% is, go, is going to result in, in. Just in terms of getting sucked into a, a game and suddenly how low the team's confidence is after the defeat. My, my concern here is that um, we're in something of a 2007 situation, which we've been talking about for I don't, months now. I don't think so. And I, I, I'm afraid I don't, I don't see it in that fashion. So, so I think there's valid criticism um, because we lost against Japan. We've never lost against Japan before. And I know we're playing them in Japan and I know it's a World Cup and they've geared up for it, but we're a better team than that. So I think the team and, uh, and the coaches should be really, really peeved by what happened then um, from their own performance because it wasn't good enough, right? It's how they react to that. And I, I do subscribe to that from is, what is the reaction going to be afterwards. So my expectation is that our, our reaction is of a very high standard of efficiency. We're not talking about everything going right. We're not talking about having uh, set plays that, that take six or seven phases before we get the score because that really works very well against good teams. But for simple teams, they only want to do a simple thing against you. So you have to put yourself in a position to where um, you just put them under pressure all the time. Uh, if that happens, I, like I don't have a doubt we get the five tries, but that's fine for us to have that attitude. But the players, when they go out onto the field, A, have to have the plan that fits the bill for it, and B, have to deliver on that emotionally from the start. Because it has to be brutal. Uh, let's let's uh, let's assume you're right that we do win this game, right? And and then we we do get through the the final pool stage, and we end up in the quarterfinal. How much room is there for players to play their way into the team, or is this all still pre-programmed? Does he still have his his sense that like my first fifteen is essentially my first fifteen, with maybe one position here or there? I, I guess I'm wondering: are there any repercussions for the people who performed so badly against Japan, or do they somehow just get a pass for that? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both, and I'm not sitting on the fence in terms of that. I, I think you need players playing in form in a World Cup. You can't go back and say he played really well two years ago. Let's pick him for this game. The guys need to get... Um, uh, the, you, and you'll, see, you'll notice it in training, and you'll notice it in... Um, uh, you'll notice it in the matches, of which players are up or not. And that's, that's the selection. That's what it's going to be. I don't think it's going to deviate hugely from what we would consider to be our first 15. Um, but it doesn't always work out that way. I, I had a chat with Brian O'Driscoll. He was going over his memories of, of, uh, of playing in a World Cup a few weeks ago. And I had a chat with him. I said, Brian, do you remember that you trained like an absolute drain in the World Cup in 2003? Yet his performances on the field were spectacular. You know, because he just, he just his tra whatever it was, whether it was uh, the huge pressure of it and really wanting to do very well, his standard of training wasn't at the level that it had ever been. He was the best trainer we ever had, and it wasn't. Um, but the second he turned onto a field, he had the capacity to be able to go and then perform to the highest standard. So to be the best player on the field uh, every single time we, we, he donned the jersey. So uh, that's what coaches figure out. Actually, yeah, he's training really badly. I'm dropping him. No, I'm not, because actually I know he's able to flick the switch. That doesn't work for every single player within it. So, look, I was unbelievably frustrated uh, watching the game. I, I, You know, you're half shouting for Japan because they're the underdog, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. You're shouting for them saying, well, that's fine because we're still going to pull away at the end and win, and this will be a really creditable performance from Japan. Mm. That's what it felt like. Because you expected it to ramp up at different times, but we didn't. We just, um, 
and this is one of the ongoing arguments I have, is it the emotional thing that you bring to the table first that is the most important thing, or is it your attention to detail? You might make a few mistakes and you lose it. Well, I think we have to be we have to get to a pitch first. I've always believed it's an emotional element first. So you can't rely on biting bollock and getting up there and being uh, absolutely fully up to it to win every game. But it wins an awful lot of games. And it actually wins all the games at a lower level because that's where the risks are. That's absolutely where the risk is, where you decide and take something for granted or don't. Yeah. Any doubts about Rory Best, given how well he played in the first game and then the second game, he is the leader and watching this happen around him and not actually able to stem the flow? Look, I said this early, early on. I thought he was under huge pressure for it, right? I really did because um, he didn't set the world on fire in, in the warm-up games. Uh, the warm-up games don't matter in, in truth, but there's always a doubt because this is his last time to wear the jersey. Um, it's a big call to pick a guy that's 37 years of age, so he has to deliver all the time. For me, I felt he should have been rested. Playing 80 minutes in the first match was is a huge call, right? But he played it. He did really well. He, like, he really played well. But to try and back that up within a week is a hard one. So I would have felt that you need to, if you're going to use him, and if he has the leadership capabilities that everybody says he has, well, then you need to manage it properly. He can't play every minute of it. Um, I, I think that's an, I think that's a difficulty. So I'm delighted he's not he's not involved, right? Because I think that that's very important that he's not. But I said it as well. I think last week that there could be a case for him in certain matches that he becomes the captain to finish the match with 20 minutes to go. Yeah. I think there may be something in that in Johnny Sexton getting it, because Johnny is the most senior guy um, after after Rory really in the squad. He's the guy with all that experience. Well, one last question on that, because Peter Manny came up um, in conversation yesterday with, with Shane Byrne, and he says his position is under threat at the moment. Is Peter Manny's position under threat, do you think? I, I think a lot of players are, are like, I, I think O'Mahony and CJ Stander um, played well in the first one. Well, Peter went off early. CJ played well. Didn't get a chance to shine too much last week, so he suffers a little bit from it. Um, we need our players to be on the top of the ground, to be absolutely playing as well as they can. I would say that every player, probably with the exception of Johnny Sexton, are under pressure for their position. But that is the nature of, 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 of big competition. They have to perform. These are the days that they have to perform. In, re- in light of the captaincy, I don't think that is something at all. I think Joe Schmidt has gone for his chief lieutenant who has delivered for him year after year after year and he's saying look we we're in a small bit where we're we're not in the right place let's put a guy in who's actually able to pull the strings anyway he's going to see more of the ball than anybody else he's going to be vociferous anyway but let's just give him the mantle and i think it's a it's a huge honor so it's an honor Johnny has to uh, has to wear and wear very well lots of guys get a chance to captain well not a lot of guys get a chance to captain but you do get a chance and you tend to have a way of getting into it he doesn't. This is a World Cup game. He yeah. has to deliver and he has to kind of show that level of uh, leadership. And if, if ever there was a guy who was the lieutenant of Joe, it's Johnny. So, like, I get it. I get the call. I understand it entirely. All right. Keith, enjoy. Good stuff. Thanks a million. Brilliant. Cheers, lads.